Hello, everybody. I'm Melissa, and welcome back to Book Bar, and welcome to another Are These New Releases Worth It video. Uh, this month, I will be reading new releases, probably five, maybe less, who knows, uh, but I I'm not even sure what I'm going to read. I never know until I decide as I'm going on. But I do know I have an arc for, or I will be getting an arc for if you give a single dad a nanny. And I have an arc for This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. Um, if you give a single dad a nanny is by Ann Einerson. I'm getting the arc at some point. So I will be reading that. Um, also, I have the arc from back when in like September or something, it was put on Night Alley and it was like, you can download it free for a day. So I could read that. Uh, I might wait until it comes out and get the audiobook. We'll see. Then I, McKay from Oh Hey It's McKay, her next book comes out, Take My Hand. I do want to really want to read that. Um, and yeah, I think Wild River comes out. So there's a lot of books that I could potentially read. Don't know what I will get to yet, but those are just some options, some things that I am excited for. I'm sure other books that will come out that I'm excited for uh or that'll that I'll remember and I'm forgetting right now happens every month that like something I'm like oh yeah I forgot I really wanted to read that so yeah uh, stay tuned for what books I read and my thoughts on them and I'll talk to you all in the next one hello good afternoon uh, it is a no makeup day but that's fine uh I am 25% of the way through if you give a grump a no if you give a single dad a nanny and it is so cute um so basically this follows marlo and dylan and marlo moves in in the prologue marlo moves in next door in a pink house next door to dylan and his daughter lola yeah marlo has a dog named waffles who instantly is attracted like instantly takes a liking to lola and follows her around and just loves to sneak over into Dylan's yard to spend time with Lola and Lola is obsessed with Waffles the dog and she really enjoys Marlo too because Marlo is just like a sunshiny bright she loves glitter and sparkles and like bright colors and that's how Lola is Lola loves unicorns and rainbows and things that a six-year-old of course loves and they take a liking to each other um Dylan is the CFO of his family's company and so he is a very busy single father. You know, we don't really know what happened with the mom, but he spends, like he like, takes a helicopter to New York a couple days a week. He, his parents help him out and they have a nanny who takes her, who takes Lola to school and sometimes is there in the afternoons to help out. But something happens with the nanny and she needs to, she has to quit because she has to move because she had some personal stuff. And Dylan is, no, Dylan is trying so hard to find someone else, but nobody wants to go live in a small town in Maine for part-time work, even though he's like, I will pay them full-time wages. Like, I, I just need someone. And nobody's willing to do this. So his meddling mother decides to get him to ask Marlo. And so Marlo has agreed to help out. And Marlo is an artist, so she has kind of an open schedule, but it's very cute so far, and I'm having a great time. It's just, I don't think it's going to be anything, like, deep, but I'm just excited. It's, like, one of those, like, giggling my feet while reading books, and I could definitely see that happening. So, I'm going to go so I can keep reading, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Hello, I am 50% of the way through If You Give a Single Dad a Nanny by Ann Einerson, and I'm having a fantastic time with it. Um... Marlo and Lola are getting on like gangbusters. They have become really close. Um, Dylan has tried to like point out negative things and Lola, or, and Marlo's like knocking him down at every point. Like, nope, 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 nope. Like, and it's fantastic. Like he needs to be brought down a pick and she is doing that. And I, so I am enjoying that. And they, his mom is being very meddlesome. She convinced both of them to go to like a speed dating event and didn't tell either of them that it was a speed dating event. And of course, things happened where he got really jealous and then he decided he wanted to kiss her. It was just, it's so cute. She, then Lola got really sick. So Marlo took care of him and then 
or mom would take care of her and then um she got sick so very reminiscent of like the heartless um caretaking scene where the child gets sick dad is unavailable to help nanny helps and then nanny gets sick herself and dad takes care and it's just i love a scene like that like the chef's kiss my biggest issue so far has been like a con little slight continuity error so this book's supposed to take place in maine and he calls his brother and it's like six o'clock between six and eight a.m uh, probably closer to like eight a.m is what it sounds like seven eight a.m and he's talking to his brother and his brother says well i have to go and his brother's in vegas which maine and vegas are a three hour time difference and his brother says oh i have to go into a board meeting right now so even if it was 8 a.m., that's 5 a.m. in Vegas. Um, I don't know many businesses where board meetings are happening at 5 in the morning. I mean, I know it's Vegas, but a little weird. A little weird. Just an unbelievable kind of. So, yeah, that's my biggest issue so far. But, I mean, if that's my biggest issue, then this book is fantastic. So, that continues to be my biggest issue. Um, but, yeah. I mean, other people probably wouldn't pick up on that. I just did because I lived on the west coast and i know like there is like a east coast bias like timing wise uh, and especially now like living in like the central time i know the time difference is like crazy and i'm only two hours different but yeah so <laughs> i am enjoying it i'm going to go because i want to continue reading and i'll talk to you all in the next one well i am 75 percent of the way through if you give a single dad a nanny and i am loving it it is so cute um I'm just like kicking my feet, giggling, like it is, ugh, it's so good. And I'm having a fantastic time with it. Marlo is neurodivergent. It says, I believe at the beginning, like before you start. Uh, she doesn't have like a diagnosis of anything, but because there are so many different types, forms of neurodivergence. And that's what it is. She just has some form of it. And her parents don't agree with her life choices to be an artist and she invites them to go to her uh, gallery and they turn her down and they always do they've never been what is happening with my hair and she's very upset about it um she kind of cries about it which is very I mean I could imagine like if my parents weren't supportive of me I wouldn't don't know what I would do especially with everything that's been going on they've been very supportive of me and even though, like, I never told them about YouTube, really. Like, they have started, like, watching my videos. Not necessarily watching them, like, watching them. Especially because of the content that I talk about. Reading romance novels and stuff. I mean, my mom, she reads romance novels. But she's like, I don't want to sit and watch a 20-minute video. Totally understand. She's a quick like she's never been into the youtube situation my dad sometimes has watched youtube videos in the past so he but him and my brother like my parents and my brothers have been just very supportive of me since with everything that's been going on and so i can't imagine not having that support and she's very upset and she doesn't invite dylan to her gallery show because he know she knows that he's been very busy at work and doesn't want to add something else to his plate well uh her meddling best friend and his meddling mom get him to go to him and his siblings so all of the Stafford family goes um to her gallery show and he gets jealous of her best friend of her guy friend that like owns the gallery and he offers to buy like her most expensive artwork and it's just adorable and yeah I am a little nervous for what's gonna happen in this next twenty five percent. I do know there is no like third act breakup, which I appreciate. So I'm interested to see what the conflict is going to be. Um, we've learned a little bit more about uh, Dylan's past with Lola's mom and what happened there, and yeah, I'm having a good time with this, and I am excited to continue and finish it out. And so I'm gonna go because it's late and I'm tired. And I just want to curl up in bed and finish it and hopefully stop yawning. So I will talk to you all when I am done. Hello, I have finished If You Gave a Single Dad a Nanny by Ann Einerson. And I loved it. Five stars. Perfection. Um, I loved Lola and Dylan and Marlo and Waffles. They were just the most adorable little family. And yeah, 
I am very glad that I read this and that I got an arc. So thank you to the author for sending me that. Um, but I had a great time with it and yeah, I'm excited to continue the series um, because I'm sure the brothers are going to get to their own books and they each got a good thing coming to them. So yeah, that is all I have for now. I will talk to you all when I have read my next book. Hello, good evening. I am 25% of the way through Bullets by Devonie Perry and I have no words. I am obsessed with it so far. Like that was like the fastest I've read 25% of a book in so long. I could not put it down and I really didn't want to put it down even to do this update, but I have to. And it is so good. So this follows Torin and I can't think of the heroine's name. It's really, it's strange. Um, it's like Jess, Jessalyn or something like that. I don't even remember. <laughs> but it's forbidden because Torin is a, the football coach, one of the football coaches. And the heroine is a volleyball player, which Obviously, different sports, but still. He's a coach at the school, and she is a volleyball player, so she is a student at the college that he at Treasure State, and they are neighbors. Age gap, it was a one-night turned to, it's a one-night stand turned to more. It's like all of my favorite tropes combined into one. I don't think it's a second chance, but OMG, I am eating it up like freaking candy, and I cannot wait to continue. So that is what I'm going to go do because I am loving it and I'm getting the five star feels from it so far. So I'm going to go so I can continue and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Good evening. I am 50% of the way through Blitz by Devney Perry and I am just, I'm kicking my feet, screaming, having a wonderful time with this. I am obsessed. Um, basically, they... Torin and J Jensen, Jensen cannot stay away from each other and it's just, you know, it's going to cause all sorts of problems and we're still unsure about what, why she left Stanford. I'm excited to like find out what happened because I think it had to do with like a teammate and a boyfriend possibly. Um, but yeah, I am really enjoying it. I'm having a great time and I cannot wait to continue, which is what I'm going to do. So there you go. And I'll talk to you all when I get to 75%. Hello. I have finished Blitz by Devney Perry. And I didn't do a 75% update because I just really didn't have much to say that I hadn't already said and that I wouldn't be repeating again now. Um, but I'm giving it five stars. I absolutely adored it. It was just adorable. Like, kicking my feet, screaming, crying. Like, adorable. Loved it. Giggling. Was it like fantastic? Probably objectively not, but I loved it and it was like everything I wanted in a like it was taboo without being like too taboo. Um, and I've realized like the older I've gotten, the more like I don't love super taboo books. Like this was a great play on like a coach athlete romance. I mean, I still love me some coach athletes, like the Bat Off Balance series will always be one of my favorites, but. This was a good, like, alternative to that because he wasn't her coach. He, like, I don't love the power imbalance of some romances like that. And this definitely did not have that because, obviously, he wasn't her coach. He was the football coach and she was a volleyball player. So, but technically it was, he, I mean, he's still, the age gap there was the, but it's not like he was, like, a professor at the school. He just was a, an assistant football coach and they fell in love and I was totally on board with that. So I think like the older I've gotten, the more like the really like tabooness kind of doesn't sit right with me, but this was like a good alternative to that. So yeah, I had a great time with it. I'm really glad I read it and I loved it. And I definitely think it's one that everyone should pick up. So I'm gonna go. I have already started my next book. Um, I started Heartbreaker Handoff by Lexa Martin and I am so excited to talk to you all about it because I have a feeling it's going to be fantastic. So I'll talk to you all in the next one. Hello. I am 25% of the way through Heartbreaker Handoff by Lexa Martin and I don't know. It's not my favorite. I'm having a good time with it. 
So this follows Roxy and Billy. And Roxy, if you like, this is a series of standalones, um, interconnected standalones. So if you read Second Down Darling, which was one of my favorite books from last year, um, you know that Roxy is pregnant by the asshole quarterback. And, but she's best friends with Billy, who is a defensive guy who hates Ezra. And her dad, Roxy's dad also is not a big fan of Billy because Billy's got a big mouth. He's cocky and he like makes jokes and he may have had some interesting sexual experiences in the past. So, Bill, uh, Coach is not a fan and Coach happens to be Roxy's dad. So, Roxy is pregnant, hasn't told anyone other than Billy knows, Charlotte knows, and like one or two other people know. Hasn't told Ezra. Uh, so she goes to confront Ezra and tell him, and she turns out that he is engaged to his high school sweetheart, who he's been cheating on forever, like, since he's been in college, and obviously got another girl pregnant. So she doesn't tell him because she feels bad, like, she doesn't want to drop that bomb at his engagement party to his high school sweetheart, so she doesn't do it. Uh, she hasn't told her family, and, but she's quit the cheerleading team, done all this stuff, so, I mean, there's a lot thrown at you in 25%. And it's not that long. Like, I literally only took me like an hour to get through the 25%. Not even an hour, I don't think. But, um, basically, she goes to tell her dad because she had to quit chair. And she's at school on a chair scholarship. So, obviously, if she's not cheerleading, no scholarship. And she goes to tell her dad. And he starts yelling at her and berating her and being a complete a-hole to her. And Billy goes in and says that it's his kid. So, yeah. It's not. He knows. He knows it's not. Um, and I think a couple other people know that it's not. But I think the people that knew know that it's not. But, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, so, they are going to now fake date because he needs to improve his image. He wants to enter the draft in the next seat at the end of the next school year. And so he has like one more season of football eligibility and he wants to enter the draft, but he needs to clean up his image and having a good girlfriend would help that. But, um, he was also told not to knock anyone up. So we'll see, but I, I am enjoying it. It's just when I compare it to like the, uh, like it's probably going to be like Titans and Tiaras where it's like a little bit lower, whereas second down darling varsity dead dilemma and um, I can't think of what the third, what the third one was called. Baby Blitz. The Baby Blitz. I loved those. I ate those up, but we'll see. I'm having a good time with it though. So I'm going to go. So I'm going to continue reading and I will talk to you all in the next one. Hello. Good evening. I am 50% of the way through Heartbreaker Handoff by Lex Martin and <laughs> I have no words. Oh my God. That last 25% was insane. Um, <laughs> Like, so much has happened that I'm like, it's crazy. So Billy is fully pretending that he is Roxy's baby daddy. Everyone, to everyone, that's what he is. He knows it's not true. She knows it's not true. But that's about it. Um, and Ezra said some pretty crappy things. And so Billy was like, Phew. And now some craziness has happened and I need to continue reading. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I will say there are a few points where I've like thought I've like skipped pages and I'm like, I'm reading on my Kindle. How would that happen? So I like have to like go backwards and like sometimes I feel like we're getting like thrown into like weird situations, but it's not going to affect it overall. I'm sure I am loving this a lot more than I was. Um, it might end up being my favorite. <laughs> we'll see. I, but I am having a fantastic time with this. So I'm going to go so I can continue. And I will talk to you all at the next check-in. Good evening. I am 75% of the way through Heartbreaker Handoff. And I just want to cry. It's so emotional. So Roxy had her baby. And things with her and Billy have just been off. Because school started back up. Football's back. He's busy. She's busy. They're like two ships passing in the night. And things have just been off and it's just really emotional and she's like getting in her head about it and you know hormones are whacked and he's like not handling it great 
I'm like really nervous for what's going to come in this next 25%. So yeah, but I am loving it. Um, probably going to be a five star, <laughs> but I'm going to go so I can continue reading it and I will talk to you all at the end. Hello. I have finished Heartbreaker Handoff by Lex Martin and five stars. I just, I love this series with my whole heart. Like every book has been phenomenal. Every book has like emotional moments, but also just very much lighthearted fun. Um, the third act was rough and I almost yeeted my Kindle across the room because I was so mad, but it all worked out. Billy and Roxy were just perfect and adorable. And the way Coach came around to Billy so cute. So fun. And yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I'm glad I finished it and read it. And I read it like I binged it in like a day. So yeah, I'm going to go because I need to go over and cook some dinner for my aunt and her friend. And yeah, I'm going to go do that. And I will talk to you all in the next one. Hello, I am 25% of the way through This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. And I'm obsessed. Um, I know that it's gotten like a lot of criticism because it's more of a like woman's fiction than a romance but Kennedy Ryan's writing is just so phenomenal and like this 25% has just been riveting so basically this follows Soledad who if you read the first book you know she's in a marriage and her marriage isn't great her husband kind of sucks like her friends like talk to her about it but she's a stay-at-home mom she's very much a homemaker does all sorts of things for her daughters she has three girls who have different ideas of what they want to do with their lives and she helps all of them and her husband has a seemingly pretty good job and so she doesn't need to work and she's okay with that like she's happy to be with her girls and be able to do these things for them take them be at all of their events take them to all their things and in the beginning she meets this man Jonah who's newly working with her husband uh, but he's a forensic accountant and so he finds things that maybe other people don't want him to find uh and he discovers something about Soledad's husband that is pretty bad um uh, that he's been you know embezzling quite a bit of money I mean, skimming from the top basically like charging customers more than like they're paying and like things like that so this all happens in the first 25 percent like <laughs> her husband gets arrested like by the FBI, they come in wanting to detain, you know, figure out what's going on. And then like she, Soledad is left completely in the dark, but her husband basically admits it to her. And then she finds out that the asshole has been cheating on her and gave her chlamydia. And he tried to freaking um, gaslight her into think, saying that it was her. Like he was like, I, I, if you have chlamydia, where'd you get it from? How'd you get it? And she's like, really? No, you're not doing this to me. I know it was you. You're the only man I've been with in 20 years. Like, what the hell? So she's done with him. Like, she's over it. She's done protecting him. She was willing to do it for her girls, but she's done. She's like, you know what? My girls can find out what a horrible person you are. So, yeah. Um, also, this cover is totally, like, my vibe. The pink and the yellow, like that's the same color as my um, thumbnails. Like it's very much my vibe, Plus the pink foiling on this, but I'm having a great time with this. I could see how it is more of Soledad's story than it is Jonah's, but I'm okay with that. Like, I don't know, maybe because I knew that going in, but I just, Kennedy Ryan's writing is just so phenomenal that like, it doesn't bother me at all. So yeah, I'm going to go. So I can keep reading because I'm having a great time and I will talk to you all in the next one. Hello, I am 50% of the way through This Could Be Us by Kennedy Ryan. And I'm still having a great time with this. Um, I will say like this last chapter was much more like very much Soledad's journey, which is fine. Like I said, I'm having a good time with it. Kennedy Ryan just knows how to write a damn book. So yeah, I actually think I'm liking this a little bit more than the first one unpopular opinion I know but I don't know I'm having a good time with it uh it could also be like the audiobook is phenomenal and I'm just having a good time reading and doing my listening and doing my puzzle so 
I'm gonna get back to doing that. Uh, there's not really much more to say other than, you know, I can see one of Soledad's daughters is was very close to her father and she could have a big issue with her and Judah, which I think I called him Jonah last chapter or last update, but you could see her having a little bit of an issue with Soledad and Jonah considering everything that happened with the hus with um Soledad's ex ex husband and Judah. But we'll see. It is good. Um her oldest daughter, which so her oldest daughter is best friends with the daughter from the first book. And the daughter from the first book was just kinda awful at points. Um and but the oldest daughter is like she is very much for her mom's journey and like respects that her mom is doing this on her own and like just trying to do the best that she can for her girls and yeah I'm enjoying it a lot so I'm gonna go so that I can continue working on this puzzle and I'll talk to you all when I get to 75% I am 75% of the way through this and I am obsessed uh like this this last 50 25% has been much more of like a much more romance than so I'd say like the first 25% was building the story right like what was happening for both parties and how their lives were intertwined then the second part was more like solid edge journey with a little bit of Jonah Judah why do you calling call him Jonah a little bit of Judah mixed in but this I feel like we have learned like people say from reviews I've seen that people are saying like Judah's story like he doesn't grow at all I feel like he's grown in this like he's learning what he wants like he's a never like it's never explicitly said that he's autistic like he doesn't have a diagnosis but he believes he it's possible that he could be on the spectrum because his sons both are um and he sees a lot of that like the, what they go through in himself so he's learning a lot about himself through what's going on with Soledad and like his relationship with her and like learning how to ask for what he wants because his whole life has been about his sons and like making sure that they're happy and they're well adjusted. And I, so I fully am like invested and obsessed with this. I am loving it. And yeah, I would imagine this will be five stars but I'm loving it and I'm so glad that I'm reading it and I've been reading and listening and Jacoby DM just brings Judah to life like his voice so amazing um but yeah I'm gonna go so that I can continue and hopefully get this finished tonight and I'll talk to you all at the end hello good afternoon <laughs> I finished this last night and I absolutely loved it. Uh, five stars. Definitely a book that I just, I just loved it. I it, I read it at the right time. It was just fantastic. Um, the end, the way that the middle daughter came around to everything was just absolutely beautiful. And yeah, I loved it. Five stars, of course. Um, and I'm so glad that I finally got to it. Or not that I finally got it, that I picked it up really quickly in the month, um, but it, it really quickly during its release. So yeah, I'm going to go and I will update you all when I have started another book. I am 25% of the way through Take My Hand by McKay Marie and I am loving it so far. This is the second book in the Whisper Me Nothings series. This is, or it's a series of interconnected standalones. Uh, I mean, I would read Take My Hand before it because it was fantastic. Uh, but well, I don't have to if you don't want to, uh, if the tropes don't interest you. But this one, so if you read the first one, you know that Carter was in a relationship with a jerkwad who berated her and talked down to her and yelled at her and was a, verbally abusive, basically. And I... No, he was ever physically abusive, but he was, like, mentally abusive. So, definitely, like, an abusive relationship. And you know that Hayden is, his little brother was the survivor of a school shooting. And he struggled, like, he has struggled with that a lot. Because he was there. And, like, he, there's just things he witnessed. And so, he has a lot of demons from that. And 
he helped Carter the most when her ex was a jerkwad. And as you're reading, like you learn, he actually did a lot more than you, than we learned in Take My Hand, so, or in Take You Down. <laughs> That's the first book. Uh, but it's just right now, like there's not really a ton going. There's a little bit of flirty banter going back and forth between them, but there hasn't been like a lot of moments between them. I mean, it is only 25% of the way through. So they did have, um, Carter had asked Scarlett to come help her um like move some furniture and she obviously brought walker who then and then he invited hayden to come along so they had some fun like flirty moments there and they ran into each other like out in la and then he's been like texting her some stuff so not like a ton ton of interactions but enough that it's not like why what is happening this is 25 percent why are they but enough of but their banter has turned very flirty and like their most recent conversation was very flirty so yeah, I'm excited to continue. I'm really enjoying it. I, like, I really enjoyed Take You Down. I gave it four and a half stars, rounded up to five. It was probably more of, like, a four star, but I still really enjoyed it, and I love McKay. She's awesome. Not that the, my, like, your, a person's personal relationship with the author should mean anything, but I just struggle with that, but, um, I am trying to be like more objective, especially because I did get an arc of this one. So, but I am like, I am enjoying this so like, I'm really sucked in. Like it took me a while to get sucked in to take you down, but I'm already like really loving Take My Hand. Um, so I'm having a great time with it and I am going to go so I can continue and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Hello. Good evening. I am 50% of the way through Take My Hand by McKay Marie and obsessed I love it so much um it had it has my favorite micro trope tattoo for you but it's like different it's not yeah it's like a different tattoo for you so yeah I am loving it um they had a very like heated photo shoot um Carter went to help Hayden with some stuff uh, some home improvement stuff and like saw in his house he has like this like wall of just like pure windows and it lets in great natural light and everything and she was like oh my gosh this is amazing this would be like a dream to take pictures in so he was like well why don't you make it a studio and she was like oh I don't know and then he offered to um be her first like client and take some pictures in the room and it was a very interesting like it was like a very interesting photo shoot I really enjoyed it the whole scene and then some stuff happened and he kind of goes to her for a while because Hayden likes to control things in a certain area and he wanted to make sure Carter understood and was okay with it um, and you like, give her time to like process everything. And she was like, yeah, I processed it. I don't care. Like, I like you. So yeah, they had a moment and it's been a good time so far. So I'm really enjoying it, but I'm going to go so I can continue reading. And I will talk to you all when I get to 75%. Hello. I really quickly wanted to come on here and tell you, sorry, it's really loud, I'm at the airport, but I wanted to do a 75% check-in of Take My Hand. Still loving it. Don't want to say much because I'm at the airport, but I will do a more in-depth update at the, when I finish, but I am loving it. Have a fantastic time. And yeah, I'm going to finish it on the plane. So I'll talk to you all in the next one. Hello. Good evening. I have finished Take My Hand by McKay Marie and I loved it. Five stars. Absolutely phenomenal. Um, I even teared up a little bit on the plane. Well, I would have had I not been on an airplane. I probably would have cried, but I was on an airplane, so I didn't cry. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I'm giving it five stars. Loved it so much. Carter and Hayden were perfection. Um, and I'm so excited for Reed's book, which I know isn't book, till book four. I know Nicola and Jane are next, but 
Reed is just such a broken boy, and I'm so excited to know more about his story. But yeah, that is going to be the end of my new release vlog. I read five new releases, and I think I gave all of them five stars. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure all five of them got five stars, so phenomenal. This was a great month for new releases. Um, I know Take My Hand doesn't come out, so I'm posting this video earlier than normal, but Take My Hand comes out on, I believe, Monday. So I'm posting this on Saturday. It should come out Monday. So yeah, uh, that is all I have for now. If you made it to the end of this video, leave me a guitar emoji because even though Hayden is a bassist, close enough. Uh, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. It really helps me out and I will talk to you all in the next one. Bye.